Hello, welcome to another live stream for Clark College's Drawing One. <clears throat> uh, my name is Grant Hoddle, and uh, I'm going to be talking today about the um, anatomy of the portrait. Um, some of this is kind of some basic rules and routines that you can get into to talk about or to get your drawings to be a little bit more proportional, um, to make sure that your faces feel structurally sound and have some have things in the right the right place. Um, uh, those of you who have spent a lot of time in your life drawing humans may know some of this already. Um, but for those of you who have very little experience, I hope this will give you a bit of a foundation moving forward into your uh, week seven project project, which is to be uh, to draw yourself uh, in the mirror uh, and life size. So let's get started. Um, what you're looking at here is just a really quick basic blue line pencil uh, drawing of some of the basic face, facial features uh, that we're going to be talking about today. And I'm going to use this um, diagram to talk through some of the positional issues that uh, students usually get into. So um, let's talk about these heads, generally speaking. So we have a, a head on view and a uh, portrait, uh, a profile view, and I'm just going to use a red pencil to create some extra guidelines as I talk so that you can hopefully see uh, what it is that, you know, that I mean across this. So the first thing is, is that the, sh the general shape of the head is ovular. It should be something kind of like an oval, a little bit of an egg shape. Now, people do have different styles of head, of course. And so when you're looking at yourself in the mirror, you're gonna wanna adjust this based on the height and width of your own head. Some people have kind of more rounder heads, some people have kind of squarer faces, triangular. So you wanna pay attention to all of those details as you work, but just generally speaking, if we're working for, like thinking of it as like a cartoon or, or a comic book character, you're gonna have a pretty ovular head. Now, when seen from the side, of course, that's very different. Uh, from the side, we have the roundness of the skull. And this, in this case, by the way, the roundness of the skull, the kind of sphere of that is going to be right in like that. Okay, so you have this kind of round ball. I'm making this very light so that it won't get in too much of the way of the rest of the drawing. You have this round ball and then the front of the face. Now that corresponds on this figure to something kind of like this. You have a round ball and then the oval of the face kind of sits on the front of that. And those two intersect accordingly, right? So this is the basic structure of the head that you can use especially if you're a cartoonist or comic book artist and you're trying to build characters out of nothing. <clears throat> now, it's a little different when you're drawing from life, which I'll talk about at the end of this video. I'm gonna draw myself live and you can watch me work. Um, when you're drawing yourself for this project, this week seven, drawing yourself in the mirror project, I think you should start with the internal features of your face. You should start by looking at um, your mouth and your nose and your eyes and then draw the outside of your face later so that you can kind of use it as a judgment call of how big to actually make the outside structure of your head. But let's go back to these for right now. Now, the first thing, and it's this is like kind of a, these are all rules of thumb, okay? They're not meant to be 100% all the time. Every single person on earth will obey these rules, right? What we're looking at is some basics that will help you to figure things out. And if we take the top of the head, to the bottom of the chin and we divide that in half, we have the eye line. This is the line upon which your eyes generally fall. And this is gonna at first seem really particularly low to you when you're drawing because we have a tendency to think of the people of people's faces as starting at where we look at them, which is their eyes, right? So we tend to think that the forehead uh, is the kind of top of the head, but we actually have all this extra skull up there. And if you're like as bald as I am, you've got a lot of skull visible on top uh, with, with the rest of it. So in the case of the drawing, this means that our eyes actually bring down to the middle of that head, not like rise way up here where there's a tendency. And I see a lot of student work where the main problem is that they put the eyes way too high on the head and it's stretched out all the features. Okay, so now that's our eye line. Um, now, generally speaking, when it comes to the eye line, I don't like to use a single line. I like to think of it as like, okay, that's the middle of my eye socket. Okay, so if I'm thinking of like my, my whole eye socket as being this wide and then my eye is in the middle of that, 
then I like to use two lines to represent the eye socket across the head. So something close to this. Okay, and hopefully that's clear enough for you that you can kind of see what it is I'm talking about there. These, these lines are more structurally based on the skull and less on the features that sit on top of the skull. And that's gonna be something I talk a lot about today is how to try and get your facial features to kind of sink into and respond to the musculature and tissue and skeletal structure that's inside your face. So that it doesn't just feel like stickers, uh, like a really well-drawn eye stuck onto a flat surface, right? We want everything to feel like it kind of works together as a structural part of the whole. So our eye line, if we divide that in half again, divide the eye line, that which I've got this kind of center mark, uh, from the chin, we divide that in half, we actually get the nose. And then if we divide that in half again, we get the mouth. Now I know that that can seem really kind of crazy that that's how we can break these things down and we can continue to do a lot of other forms inside of that, but this is a good general marker for moving forward with your project. Um, let's talk uh, a little bit about some of the other measurements that are good to know. When looking at uh, we'll call this um, image number one and number two. When looking at image number one here, um, the width of the eyes, and this is again another rule of thumb, are correspondent to about one fifth of the total width of the face. That means that the face should be about five eyes wide. Um, and there should be about one eye width between the eyes here. Okay, so you can kind of see that I've marked that out. So we go one, two, three, four, five. Make sense? Okay, and then nose, we're gonna talk about that in structure in just a little bit, but hopefully this is kind of helping you see some things. Now, a couple other uh, points that are a little easy to see. There tends to be a bit of a triangle between eyes, center of eyes and nose. Um, when you're drawing portrait work, this triangle, um, which I'm gonna kind of come in like this, the triangle from eyes to nose is a really useful thing to look at to try and get the proportions of your particular subject who you're drawing right. So in my case, you can kind of see that it's not a perfectly equal triangle, right? My nose is probably a little longer than the width between my eyes. So my character here is different than me. And so that uh, triangle corresponds differently. Width of the mouth falls typically just a little bit underneath where the eyes would, would fall, something like that. Ears usually fall in between the eye line and the nose line, something like that, okay? And so again, we kind of see this over here as we work. And I'm gonna come over to the, to the profile in just a minute because there's a few other rules that we need to talk about as we work. Um, for our figure here, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, now I'm switching over to a 2B pencil so we have a little bit of darkness to work with and I'll try and kind of form up some of the features as we go. And then I'm gonna talk individual um, facial features like eyes, nose, mouth, down here uh, on this on my sketch pad. And then I'm gonna turn the page and I'm gonna draw myself um, and, and you guys can kind of watch me work uh, in live format that'll be kind of similar to how you'll be working this week. Okay, so let's start with the eyes. Um, the first thing that I wanna point out uh, is that, <clears throat> what is an eye? Right, everybody knows what an eye is supposed to look like. It's a football with uh, some like eyelashes off the top of it, and then the eyeball is, you know, there's like a <laughs> thing right in the middle. Okay, so like, no, that's not what we do, but I see this a lot, surprisingly a lot. And there's a lot of mistakes inside this that I'm gonna talk about how to kind of correct in your own work. So uh, first of all, when you think about the shape of the eye, what makes up the shape of that eye are two lids, your eyelids, wrapping around a sphere. Your, your eyeball is a ball. Um, it's round and it's set back inside of your eye socket, which is kind of boxy. So it kind of looks like this. And then your eyelids wrap around that and they create depth as well as um, the actual shape that we're dealing with, uh, which is also rarely that like really simplistic football look, right? So the, the depth that I'm talking about is that the top lid, 
We're usually lit from above in most images. And so in that case, the top lid is casting a shadow, catching darkness. The bottom lid is catching a little bit of light. And then we're gonna get the tear duct, little darkness in there. And then our iris and pupil um, aren't this kind of little beaded dot right here. In fact, they sit quite strongly within the space of that whole eye. Sometimes they'll touch the bottom and top. They very rarely touch neither. You would have to like just look how wide I have to open my eye. For, and I, I'm not even sure I can open my eye that wide. Now, obviously everybody's different. So I might have a little heavier lidded eyes than you. And maybe you can make it look like this. Okay, so the first thing is to notice that your iris, the iris is the colored part of your eye, and your pupil, the black part of your eye, are um, situated inside your eyelids in a way that we can kind of see them touching either the top, almost always the top, unless you're looking down like this, and, and often the bottom as well. So they sit in like that. And then we get a lot of shadow cast from the ridge of the eyebrow. And I'm gonna talk about this a lot today. Um, from the ridge of the eyebrow, a lot of shadow joins, you can really see it right here, sorry, right here, right? How that shadow of my nose and eye socket really join my eyebrow into the side of my nose and into the crook of my eye. So we get a lot of cast shadow down into that space right there if you're getting, if your light source is from that side. I'm also gonna go ahead and darken the iris and pupil quite a bit. They tend to be very dark. And then your eyeball, the white of your eye tends to have quite a lot of shading in it as well. It's still a ball. So even though we call it the white of the eye, it gets a lot of light and dark across the forms as well. And then the kind of shape of your bottom um, eyelid where it touches your cheekbone is gonna typically make kind of what we think of as like bags under your eyes, you're gonna get a little bit of a shadow there as well. So, okay, let me break this down really simply and then I'm gonna go move back up to our guy up here. So some of the things that you need to be thinking about when drawing an eye is number one, the shape of the eye that is made up by how your lids wrap around the eyeball. And that is very rarely a super simple football shape, this kind of typical thing, okay? What it usually happens, and in my eyes you can really see this, is a little bit of flattening across the top, angling down towards my tear duct, and then rounding across the bottom. So let me show you how that's gonna look. It's gonna look something like like that, okay? So not this super simple shape. So I want you to really pay attention to the shape of your own eye as you work. Next thing, there's a good chance, not everyone, but a lot of people have a crease at the top of their eye. You see mine right there? Look right, look right here, see that? So you wanna try and get that crease to be visible in your drawing, and you're gonna need to work that in. If you see it, not everyone has it, so pay attention to it, and you want that crease to also exist inside this drawing. I also like to think about the thickness of the eyelid itself, so a little bit darker on top, and then letting me see a couple of lines on bottom instead of using a single lid. And then the iris and pupil, don't make it too small, don't make it a little beady-eyed. And then finally, this should be fairly dark. A, lot, a common mistake I see is this move. You know you have blue eyes, and so you make a really dark iris and a very light outside space. See how that kind of looks like beady-eyed anyways? I have fairly light blue eyes, but in the image that you're looking at, look at how dark my irises and my pupil are. They kind of merge into this pretty darkened circle inside my eyes. So you want to do the same general thing across the top of yours. So you want that to all be fairly dark, okay? Let it feel like there's some shadow, some looming shadow that things happen in there. And again, I'm gonna talk about this later, but you also don't wanna overemphasize the eyebrow. You wanna let that kind of connect into the eye altogether. So let's move back up to our fella up here, the eyes. And 
and go ahead and think about the eyebrow as well. And then we're gonna think about moving on to nose, okay? For nose, really quickly get it on there. Some of the things I like to think about for the nose is this kind of boxy shape of like kind of defining it almost like a pyramidal structure, something kind of like that, where we can see and feel the actual kind of planar shapes of how the face fits together. And I think, you know, we could take this all the way across the whole head and think about the planes and how they shape up each little section of that, right? Including the forehead versus the sides of the head and so on. But for right now, those kinds of structures will help you quite a bit. Now, the nose from the front is a really difficult way to draw it. Um, I find it to be one of the more you know tough ways to go. And so with that in mind, you might consider in your own drawing, drawing yourself in a three quarter view so that you're instead of straight on your three quarter angle to the, to the mirror. That will mean you'll have to get your head back in the same position every time you look down at your paper, but with that will come the benefit of not having to draw your nose straight on, which is a really difficult thing to do. And it'll give a little bit more um, dynamism to your pose anyways, kind of move you a little bit in the, in the frame. So the nose, once again, I'm gonna draw down here the little bit bigger uh, bulk. I'm switching over to my blue so you can kind of see my beginning lines. If we wanna think about the nose as this kind of pyramid, try and draw a pyramid. There we go, better. Okay, the way that I'm thinking about this is this is the bridge of the nose, the sides of the nose, and the underside of the nose. The underside of the nose is often left out. So if we're thinking about it in terms of light and dark, we might have shadow here and here. This means that our nostrils, where they kind of kick in at the sides, where they touch your cheek right here, here, um, that's where the beginning of the shape of your nostril, kind of this teardrop or comma kind of shape coming forward is going to be visible. Then we're gonna have the place where the uh, your septum right here, where that touches your upper lip is gonna be another marker. And then we've got the, the front of your nose where there's usually gonna be a core of shadow, a little bit darker right here at the tip, right before the highlight. And so you're gonna have something like a shadow kind of rolling across like this, and then indentations at the ball of the nose, and then of course shadow. But again, if you think about it more as like a structural thing, I, th I find it a lot easier to draw. Um, rather than just thinking of it as like, oh, well, seen from the side, my nose looks like this. And seen from the front, my nose looks like this, which I feel like is how most people draw, you know, like that mouse. And, and turning it this way and getting some of those details in there is tricky. It's not easy. But the more that you connect back to the structure of the face, the more sound that feels. And because your nose actually sit like sits in, so from the side you can see, oh, there we are. From the side you can see that my nose has like a curvature right here. And that's where my nose is sitting into the brow. Um, on my profile shot up here, you'll see it kind of like this, right? So it there's a there's a shadow that's cast right there, usually across the top a little bit. And that all sinks in to this shape that I was just talking about right here. So like this all kind of becomes a part of the same shape that meets up with the shape of the eye and everything. Okay, so like all this joins up. And that helps a lot when you're drawing to kind of think of it that way. So next, we'll kind of finish off the mouth. Um, a lot of times, this is the point where um, gender binaries tend to really come to the fore. Like when people talk about mouths, they say, oh, that's a very girly mouth or that's a very guy mouth. You know, and I think that that comes from a, like a whole like history of us seeing cartoons and, and thinking about like that as being a very gendered item. Meaning that like we all know, right? Like <laughs> what, what do women's mouths look like? They look like this, right? 
like big, like things like that. And then I guess guys' mouths look like, like you know, they don't have lips. Um, and so you tend to see, I tend to see students like adhere to these things. Like if they, if, if, if a guy draws himself with lips, a, a person who identifies as male draws himself with lips, they're like, I look too much like a girl. And if a person who identifies as female draws themselves with like a flat mouth, oh, I look too much like a guy. The truth is, is you all look like guys and you all look like girls and you all look non-binary. If an alien landed, they wouldn't be able to tell us apart except for facial hair and that's, even that just stops mattering all that much when you get older. So like, just don't worry so much about that. Try and spot what you're actually seeing instead of what you think it ought to look like in your head, which by the way, is a good rule of thumb for drawing all the way across the board. Try and draw what you're actually seeing, not what you think it should look like. So let's talk about mouths. Generally speaking, I like to start with the shape of the inside part of the mouth. And it's rarely perfectly flat. There's usually a little bit of variation based on the lips. And then I like to go down to the bottom lip and find, now I have a beard, so it's gonna be harder to see, but there's a shadow right here on most people lip from above where their mouth casts, where this lip casts a shadow down onto their chin. And that's what I'm using right here as a signifier for the bottom lip. And then the top lip, if, is usually pretty subtle and it's depict can be depicted as a little bit of shadow moving across the top. Now, obviously some folks have bigger lips. Some people have more full lips. Some people have flatter lips. You've got to take all this with a grain of salt and translate it into the subject that you're looking at. If you're drawing yourself, it's going to obviously be based on you. But if you're drawing someone else, you've always got to retranslate these rules of thumb. These like, you know, hopefully helping you get some of the basics down uh, as you go. So um, let's see. And then finally, you know, now we can talk a little bit about like the outside edges of the plane. I'm just going to kind of rush through ears really quick. Uh, happy to help anyone who's struggling with ears or any other part of this in a one-on-one -on -one Zoom anytime this week. Let me know and I will make time for you. Um, chin usually actually sits into the sides of the cheek a little bit. And then we also, of course, have a little bit of formal kind of qualities like that. And then the neck comes down from there. And then a lot of people tend to like kind of sublimate the neck, make it really stop down here. And that's where the shoulders start. And the problem there, let me draw it in blue so that you can kind of see it as a mistake. Um, you know, the neck is this long. But look at where my shoulders touch my neck on the sides, almost above my chin line, right? And that's because my neck is actually comes forward from my shoulders, right? So it doesn't just sit on top of them. It's built in. Your spine is an S curve. And so that means that your shoulders are actually going to come up way higher than you might think. So when you, you know, I'm asking you to draw the big, you know, basically this, like your shoulders and head, and then that'll help you figure that out. Now, as far as like hair goes, you know, obviously again, hair is really gonna depend on who it is you're drawing. And it might have a whole lot of body and be a very different kind of, just give this guy like a kind of general, like kind of Superman, Clark Kent, you know, boring dude haircut. But hopefully that will help you see how that kind of, it's bigger, notice that the hair has body, so it's bigger than the outside line of my oval, of my skull, and it sits from about the top of my forehead um, and then down all the way around the sides. Now obviously, like some people's hair is a lot less than that, some people's a lot more than that, you're gonna have to pay attention to the way that that shapes up in your drawings as well. Okay, let me show you quickly how some of these things that I'm talking about apply to uh, drawing a face in profile. Um, the biggest difference, of course, is that like all the stuff that I was seeing straight on, I'm now seeing from the side. Some things are gonna look kind of similar, but things like the eye is going to look very different. Okay, so if you think of the general shape of an eye seem straight on as a football, an o like a kind of pointed oval, then the eye from the side needs to be drawn as a basically a V 
lying on its side. And then the eyeball, and this is, I'll show you how this is made up from, uh, where this comes from. This comes from basically the eyeball. Can you draw a ball? Yes, you can. Um, having the eyelids wrap around it and make the shape like that. So that what we're left with is, again, thickness of the eyelid. Eyelashes might be visible here, possibly, depending on how close we're drawing up. That's another thing I think too many people focus a little bit too much effort on drawing eyelashes when in truth, unless you have worked really hard to separate your, your lashes, we tend to see them as a mass of darkness, not as individual hairs. Okay, so it's unless we're getting really close to a figure and seeing a lot of detail there, we're usually not going to get that much. So the basic shape is like this V situated on there, okay? Not a football shape. So you have to really look for that. Um, let me see if I can show you on my own head. And that might help. Okay. So hopefully you can see that. Now, on our figure over here, figure number two, let's give them some eyes. And as I go, I'm going to talk about some of the rules that I'm that I'm thinking about here. Number one, look at the distance that I'm setting it in from the bridge of the nose. It's a good amount, almost a whole eye width. A lot of mistake, a lot of people make the mistake of really scooting that closer to the bridge than it needs to be. The only time that that happens is if the head is turning away from you. Okay, as long as your head is in basic profile. Uh, it's not going to form up that way. So let me get some more features on here. Nose. Mouth and chin. And then let's talk a little bit about Okay, you'll notice that I shaded a little bit to kind of reference the difference in the plane between the cheek plane and the bridge of the nose plane. So the bridge in this case, if we're using some cross contour marks, we would see that the bridge is going this direction. The cheek is gonna go this direction and then come back across this direction. So between those things, we've got a lot of different shapes. So. Um, I want to signify that as I work so that we don't lose that. And again, don't put too much emphasis on eyebrows. A lot of times people really, really freak out about trying to get the exact shape of the eyebrow and they kind of over, over exaggerate what's happening there. Seen from the side, the ear is a little bit more complicated than from straight on. We actually get some of the detail. I'm not going to go into the anatomy of the ear right now, but I did in your sketchbooks give you the chance to um, draw and practice ears. Uh, if you uh, struggle with ears, I recommend that you do that, that you practice them in your sketchbook. Um, look at your own, take some photos with your phone, draw from images that you find online. You know, give yourself some practice time. <coughs> I recognize, <coughs> excuse me. I recognize that I'm rushing through this quite a bit. I'm just trying to give you some of the basics so that you can help yourself as you move forward going on. So then finally, hair, once again, is going to come basically from the you know, top of the forehead, which you notice is not the very top of the head. And then uh, you know, you, you're gonna get like kind of sideburn effect in here. So let's, uh, let's, let's, I don't know, let's give her kind of hair. Give her kind of curly. Okay, kind of a mullet. I kind of gave her a mullet. That's okay. Um, I just want you to see that. Um, now, when you are working on hair, by the way, the general way that I think of hair is like a hair helmet, the whole shape and then break it down into smaller shapes, okay? So think about how all of it shapes up 
and then you can kind of form you know form it into like oh there's a part or there's an understructure or there's like a little bit that goes you know you know maybe we have like a line of hair that comes that's like really visible and then after that it all kind of sinks back behind you can work it that way what you don't want to do is like emphasize every strand of hair like a huge bowl of spaghetti that makes it very very difficult for us as viewers to pick out the actual mass. Don't forget that hair, eyes, nose, all of it is sitting on a three-dimensional structure. What you're really making is a drawing of a sculpture, okay? You're not making a two-dimensional thing on a two-dimensional surface. You're making a three-dimensional thing on a two-dimensional surface. And the only way you can kind of think through that in your brain is to remember that everything has mass, everything has a light source, everything's casting a shadow, and if you stick with those things, it will actually simplify the drawing a little bit because it'll give you something that you can um, that you can kind of wrap your head around, that you can basically build the structure inside of there. Faces, humans are challenging, okay? To be a good portrait artist takes an entire lifetime. And it's, I am, I, I, for the record, I don't fancy myself a portrait artist, okay? I can draw people's portraits, but... The difference between me and somebody who this is their thing is immense because it's a game of fractions of inches. We're talking eighths of an inch of measurement difference between it looking just like me and it looking kind of like me, right? I can always hit it so that it looks kind of like me or kind of like you. I'm not 100% confident every time that I'm going to hit it so that it makes it look exactly like you, okay? So when you are drawing yourself this week, keep that in mind. If you struggle, and it doesn't quite look like you, that's okay. Let's, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't look like you. It's not a good thing if it doesn't look like a human, okay? It's not a good thing if it doesn't look like there's a skull under there. If your facial features don't catch light, that's not as good, all right? So we want it to be um, structurally sound first and then specific to you next, okay? So we've gone over eyes, mouth, nose, um, I haven't talked that much about ear or hair. Um, I'm happy to do that a little later. Um, notice that in your sketchbook, I, I've kind of signified about eight or nine different things that you should practice uh, sketching. And that also includes things like uh, facial accessories, like glasses or piercings, even tattoos. Um, figuring that out as well will help you, like how that actually sits on the face is, is good practice, okay? So let's move on. And I'm gonna start a new drawing. And uh, with, with, with no, you know, no structure underneath it or anything else. Let me show you guys what I'm going to be drawing from. Um, this is a photo. Uh, I'm asking you to draw yourself in the mirror, not from a photo. I'm using a photo just so that we can see the same thing as I work, okay? Now, my, my uh, paper is like right here, and I'm looking over there. That's not ideal. I like to usually have them much more lined up so that it's a really simple, I'm glancing down, glancing up, and double checking everything. But my like recording setup doesn't quite allow for that. So um, I, I just tell you all that so that you understand that like my viewpoint, like looking down this way and then looking up at the image I'm drawing is not ideal. And it's not what I recommend for you. I think it's better to have them in alignment with one another so that just really quick glances allow you to see the subtle differences in measurements that you need to go. <clears throat> okay. I want you to draw yourself as close to life size as you can. Um, I've included a lot of stuff in this week's module to help you with that. Some videos by Proco that really help about the talk about drawing the head from any angle. Those get into a lot of detail and they might kind of bog you down a little bit, um, but they're very, very useful. Um, I also have included uh, what's called a, a portrait anatomy handout. I really recommend you look through that. There's, it's, it's like the sort of thing that if we were meeting in person, I'd hand you as a stapled copy because I'm, you know, old and that's how we did it when I was in school. It's like, here's a stapled handout that somebody's photocopied out of 10 different art books for all these years. And um, that stuff will help you though. It, there's some of it's written out, some of it's drawn out. It'll give you ideas for how the structure and everything fits together. Um, for the purposes of this, though, I just I'm going to start drawing. As I come across something that I think is worth your time to know, I'll pause and talk a little bit about it. <clears throat> I always like to start somewhere close to the center, close to the eyes, 
And as you know, I like to work very loosely at the beginning because I don't have anything to go on yet. And the more information I get in there, the better I'm going to have, the better I'm going to do at measuring and correcting and getting it closer to right. Notice that I took a three quarter view. I think this makes the nose much, much easier to draw. It gives you angles that make sense. And you're not dealing with that mass of light and shadow that is a nose from straight on. Notice I, you know, at this stage, I'm just trying to be like, I'm trying to plot out and I'm doing quick measurements for myself, uh, things that you can't you know, perceive necessarily in the drawing that I'm automatically doing is like measuring the inside of this eye to the outside of the nose, to the other side of my eyeglasses, to the inside of this eye, right? Things like that. I'm trying to bounce around really quickly and give myself time to figure out. I also um, am drawing myself with my glasses on. If you wear glasses and you want to take them off, uh, that's totally fine. I just don't do that because I can't freaking see without them. Right. So like, it's not easier for me to draw myself like that. Cause now it's just a blurry bald guy. Like I need the glasses on so that I can see all the, all the magnificent detail in my gorgeous face. So, um, it does create a little bit of extra work, um, because obviously I have these things on my face in the drawing and they cast a shadow and they catch reflection and all that kind of stuff. But also it does give me some extra lines to look at. So like right here, notice that if this is the top of my nos my nostril, this distance is a little too big. So I'm going to have to pay attention to that. Am I stretching this distance out too much for it to still look like me? Or can I kind of fix it as I go? Can I pull it back in? And I'm not sure yet uh, because I don't have enough face on here to figure that stuff out yet. And I think a lot of folks teaching themselves to draw make the mistake of trying to get everything right before they move on to the next thing, right? Like draw a perfect eye and then attach it to a perfect nose and then attach that to the perfect shape of a face. And you're like, well, the problem with this, of course, is that it's only perfect in relationship to everything else going on. And so until you spend a little bit of time drawing it, you're not going to know if you've got it right or not. And so you kind of need all the bad lines, all the mistakes to figure out where the right ones go. Okay. So don't be afraid of the mistakes. A drawing should and often does kind of look like crap before it becomes a refined, good drawing. And I'm going to kind of just throw a little bit of shadow in some of these places as I'm working and establish some of the planes of the face as well. This will help me later on. Notice that there's kind of a, a good strong highlight that kind of runs up the side of my forehead right there. And I'm just going to kind of, you know, get that going. And I'm just going to go ahead and smear that out a little bit. This will help me to not be overwhelmed by, you know, any one shape. And I, I think I can now spend a little bit of time getting a little bit more detail in there. Okay. Really focus as best you can on the shapes that your eyelids make the shape of your eye. For me, that's going to have a pretty straight edge across the top, not very curved, and then a strong angle down to my tear duct, which is pretty pronounced. can see some of the thickness of my eyelid on the bottom right there where it's catching a little bit of shadow. I'm getting old, so I got crow's feet. And then that wrinkle, that seam crease across the top that merges down into the same shadow that's right here. And all of that is going to have some, some body to it, some tooth. Now, I'm not going to focus too much more than this on this one eye because I need I don't have any more information 
to go on yet. So I wanna bounce around again. I don't wanna to get too bogged down in the details just yet, but I, I do wanna figure out some things like where is the shape of my glasses? How does all that line up across the top? Where does my nose, the triangle of my nose, where does it really start? Where does it emerge out of? <clears throat> and then do I have the basic shape of that nose right? The kind of pyramidal form that we talked about before, including thinking about the underside of my nose, you know, trying to make sure that I'm, I'm kind of thinking that through as I work and making sure as good as I can that I'm getting some of the details but also not losing the structural shape of things that are gonna make it feel dimensional, make it feel round. Okay, let's go over to this eye. A lot of people really struggle with the second eye. Um, you'll see, I've seen like videos online of people just like basically trying to say how to draw the second eye when you've got this perfect eye. And some of them, I don't wanna say they're not useful. They, they are like, you know, you, but, but they all presuppose a couple of things. They presuppose symmetry that may or may not actually exist. They presuppose, um, and, and like my face is not symmetrical, okay? My face is like, my, I have one eye droops a little bit more than another. Most people do. If you uh, take a, a photo of yourself and divide it in half in Photoshop and flip one half to the other, you'll see how weird that looks on you. Like a perfectly symmetrical version of you doesn't look like you. And so what I, what I wanna do instead of that is try and get better at the proportional referencing between one part of an eye socket and then the other one. And, and think about those steps as being linked like a jigsaw puzzle, right? So, you know, the old song, like the hip bones connected to the leg bone and all that, it's true. The, these things like tie in one to the other. So if you work from piece to piece and you think about how the inside of the eye connects to the inside of the eye socket, connects to the bridge of the nose, connects to the inside of the eye socket, connects to the inside of the eye, you've got a lot of little measuring points across the board here that you can, little tick marks, that you can say like, that looks right, that looks right, that looks off, let me fix it. Which I just did, if you noticed, I had the top of my eye sitting, sitting way down here and it was wrong. So I was able to scoot it up because it didn't, you know, I haven't drawn anything yet that I can't fix or that I'm, you know, totally married to and gonna be stuck with. So pay attention as you're working to each of those little ideas and work them accordingly. See one of those bags under my eyes. That's from the terrible burden that you are, are all on me as my students. Give me bags under my eyes. I'm joking, you're fine. You're all good people. Um, I am gonna go ahead and use my eraser here and pull out a little bit of the highlight across the top of the nose. I wanna make sure and not forget that in the drawing. <clears throat> and I'll use it to kind of clean up some of the mistakes I made just right there. Um, now, one thing that you'll notice is that I'm not spending a ton of time working on the whites of my eyes, keeping them white. Like this one's really gray, this one's pretty smudgy. That's because the whites of my eyes are not white. In this image that I'm looking at, the only white part of my eye is that highlight that's catching a, a direct glare right there, okay? Everything else is gray. So I'm not gonna overly, you know, work on building this thing up uh, and like trying to make the whites of my eyes super white. That's gonna make me look very beady eyed and kind of fake, uh, like I have little BBs, dark little, you know, <laughs> beady eyed bastard that I am. Okay, let's see. A little bit of a shadow in there. And you'll notice that, that some of these planes on the, the part that I'm working on right here um, are creating a series of shadows that interlock with one another. And that can be really tricky. You know, I, I, would, I would just say like, as always, when drawing, your, drawing anything with light and shadow, when you're shading, you wanna from time to time try and bring it back to what is the shape of the value, okay? What is the shape of value? I can't see my upper lip very well in this drawing because of my beard, right? So. I'm not worrying about that. I'm trying to get the shape of the dark space of how my mouth meets into my mustache and makes this kind of overall shape. And I'm just gonna kind of drag this down a little bit too. A little bit of shadow in there. 
and a little shadow over here. used to not have so much white in my beard. Okay, I'll stop talking about being old. Okay. Now I feel comfortable deciding a little bit on the outside edges the shape of my face, okay? At the, about the same time that I'm working on the outside edges of the shape of my glasses, you know, those, those hard forms that you're seeing across there are useful to put in once you've figured out where they go. You don't necessarily wanna piece them in all at the same time. So now I'm gonna kinda work on these eyebrows. Now because my glasses are blocking part of them, I, it's a little hard to see. Um, but you can kind of tell where the eye socket is if you kind of look through that lens right there and it wraps up and comes all the way back across and that's like the top of my eye socket in my skull and it's where my eyebrow grows, okay? Yours will be similar but different. Just like everything, all of us in this world are similar but different, right? And a little bit of shading on some of that. Where the cheek touches the nostril, gonna get a little bit of shadow in there. A little bit of shadow at the top of the nostril. We'll cast shadow from the side of my glasses. And Glasses, of course, create a lot of detail that you have to pay attention to as well. But you might not have glasses in your drawing, but you'll have something. You'll have a facial feature, you know, you'll have a, a piercing or, or a beard or, you know, very elaborate um, hair. You'll have braids or a curl or, you know, something that, that gives you the same amount of pause that my glasses give me that makes you really kind of stop and pay attention to what it is that you're looking at. And seeing how that all works together. Okay, always a good time to step back and double check and see what's going on. Make sure that you're not ignoring anything really important.
always measuring visually, always taking quick notations with my eyes. What's the depth? What's the angle? How wide is a thing? Do I have it the right distance from the other thing? Can I break that down into a more simplified shape as I work? You know, everything is simplification when it comes to drawing, right? You're, you're always trying to simplify and build and then refine, you know, work from the general to the specific. And that way I can get some of my shapes in the right place. And then as I start to find what I need in the next section, I can, I can work that way. And, uh, I don't want to act like it's easy because it's not, and it takes a lot of practice. Um, but I'm always looking for basically some of the same shapes that I talked about at the start of this video. Where do the eyes meet the eyebrow? Where can I see the thickness of the skull? Uh, where is the pyramid of the nose? And how do I clump all those together into something that is visible and that makes sense for the viewer? Anytime I'm doing the smeary methods, and working back, you know, working away from something and coming back into it, don't forget you always need to kind of come back in and clarify some of your marks, be a little sharper here and there so that we can actually see what it was you intended. You intended it. And don't be afraid to make a move. If it's wrong, you can always try and fix it. Sometimes in the act of fixing it, you'll make a much better thing than you had before you made the move in the first place. So, you know, sometimes, like they say that writing is rewriting. Well, drawing is redrawing, going back over. Not You're not trying to get it perfect on the very first pass, usually. You're usually trying to refine as you work and focus your attention on detail as there's detail to be made. Consider to think about mark making, cross hatching, hatching, um, contour lines and cross contour lines as you work. And of course I'm fully shading mine. You'll probably be doing some version of fully shading yours. Um, that might mean working in A range of graphites not just a single one if you do pick a single one like I'm working with make sure it's a dark enough one a 2b or darker that you can actually fit in some details so I pull out a little bit of kind of overemphasizing this a little bit let's kind of lighten that a touch and uh, so a touch I'm feeling okay about this you know it's not like I say it's not perfect but hopefully it's giving you some ideas about how to kind of work and how to refine and where to look for the right, you know, where to look for detail and where to kind of skip past it. Um, notice that I have freckles on my face. I have a scar up here. There's another scar on my cheek over here. I'm not overemphasizing those. <coughs> we have a tendency, you know, when I used to draw self portraits when I was in college and stuff, I would really overemphasize this scar on my cheek. And it, it exists, it's visible. Anybody who knows me might have noticed it before, but like, it's not a huge giant feature of my face like I thought it was. I imagine it to be this big thing. And I, I notice that students do similar things with their, you know, defining in their eyes, defining characteristics, be it freckles or, a you know, a, a nose piercing or an eyebrow piercing or something. There's a tendency to really, really emphasize it, to draw it super, super big and dark and like draw everybody's eyes to it. And, you know, you just might not need to do it that way. So think about it double check in your own vision kind of blur your eyes do you notice the scar 
When I blur my eyes, I don't really notice the scar, so I'm not making a big deal out of it in this drawing either. I'm just going to spend a little bit of time on my forehead, and then I think I'm going to call it a day. Let you guys get on to it with your own drawings. I hope this has been helpful. So that you can kind of start to figure out on your own where you're going with your drawings and how to make your faces feel anatomically well built. And to think of your heads as sculptural, structurally dimensional, not just as two dimensional. Like I think of like the, the opposite of what I want is like would be like a sticker much like a sticker that like just you know like an eyeball sticker stuck onto a piece of paper like that's not what you want like what you want is for the eye to feel like it sits inside of a plane and for those planes to connect one to the other and you can spend more time on things as you work you can really kind of develop and redevelop and build and I want you to have fun with it you know I've only spent 20 minutes on mine I hope you'll spend three hours on yours, you know, really spend some time, be, you know, getting it right. And if you, if you botch it in the first go round, you know, you spend 30 minutes and you're like, man, this is not good. And I need to build it again. Then, wow, that's loud. Start it over from scratch and see where you get from there. Okay. I apologize for the really loud sound coming from upstairs. Okay, I think I'm gonna wrap this up here. Just, that's kind of bugging me a little bit, so kind of smooth that out of touch. But um, hopefully that'll give you an idea of like how I could keep kind of building on this form and, and, and work in a little bit more detail as I went and uh, refine that even more to try and make it look a little bit more like me as I go. Um, and hopefully that'll give you some ideas on building your own structure uh, you'll draw your own way, okay? But I want you to think about it in a lot of the ways that I hi highlighted for you today. Think about your head as a structure. Think about your skull underneath the underneath your features and really measure from point to point in your drawing. Um, really think about the distances, say for instance, from inside of the eye to inside of the eyebrows. A really important distance to get right. If you make it too big, it won't look like you. Bottom of the nose to top of the lip, really measure that. That's an important distance, right? Try and get all those little key little parts in there to, to help you see your own drawing as you work, okay? As always, you run into snags, you need help, you wanna talk about it on Zoom or in an email, please just contact me, you know how. Thanks very much, everybody. Have a great week, good luck, have fun drawing yourself.